This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Okay, so we've gone through and looked at all the various bits and pieces that we have with regards to the conceptual framework. So starting off uh, talking about the, the changes behind the framework and then going through each of the separate sections individually. Now we're just going to go through and look at a couple of examples. Uh, so what you've got there, first example number one, is a typical type of multiple choice question, but a little bit more along the lines of knowledge as opposed to application. So could be there within the exam, uh, but maybe more likely to have been seen previously in financial accounting. But it doesn't help, or it does help to go through there, doesn't it, and brush up that knowledge. So what have we got? Uh, it says the ISB's conceptual framework for financial reporting identifies characteristics. So qualitative characteristics, your fundamental and your enhancing qualitative characteristics, uh, which make financial information faithfully represent what it purports to represent. OK, so what it intends to represent, uh, which are or which of the following are examples of those characteristics? Uh, you could do it by a process of elimination or you can just have the knowledge. So if we go back into our notes, we're looking at faithful representation. An item, an asset, a liability is faithfully represented uh, if it looks at the substance. Uh, so therefore, it is complete, neutral. And is it there? free from error okay so here complete neutral two and four so that there is answer b isn't it okay excellent so it's worthwhile practicing not just these questions but also the questions within your revision kit study text uh to build up that knowledge uh, example two is a little bit more of an example of the application and some written elements. Uh, so you've got two standards that you've seen in financial accounting. So the glory days of financial accounting that you'll have done with John uh, that we look there. IS2 inventories. Here's a question. How do you measure inventory? You, the, don't start talking FIFO, LIFO, weighted average. No, that's your cost formula. Uh, inventory is measured at the lower of cost in NRV, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, so uh, we'll bring that in with regards to the framework and then property, plant and equipment. What do we do with PPE? We capitalise it. We depreciate it. We might revalue it. Uh, we may then dispose of it. OK, uh, what we need to be able to go through and do is apply the principles within the ISB framework. So the conceptual framework to the accounting standards above. So the inventory and property plant and equipment so both of them effectively if you like are assets aren't they so if we're looking at assets the definition of your assets remember you have a present economic resource You control that asset and there is a past event. Well, for all of the inventory and PPE, we, we meet that criteria, don't we? You know, uh, they are resources. They bring you benefit, don't they? Uh, through the sale of the inventory, through the use of the property, plant and equipment. We control them because it's up to us how we sell the inventory. We can control who we sell it to. With the PPE, we, we use it. Nobody else can use it, so we control its use. Nobody else can benefit from using it whilst it's under our control. And then there's the past event. The past event, effectively, is the purchase, isn't it? Okay, we purchase the inventory for resale. We purchase the PPE for use. Clever, isn't it? Uh, then what you've got is... Your measurement. Uh, so again, we can look at the measurement. We can look at PPE. And we can look at inventory. 
we answered this just a moment ago, didn't we? Uh, when you go through there and look at property, plant and equipment, it's cost versus your revaluation model. So when we're talking there about cost, that's your historic cost, isn't it? So we'll just put HC for short. Uh, when you're looking at what we revalue it to, uh, we revalue it to fair value, don't we? Okay, so therefore, that's the measurement basis for your property, plant and equipment. If you want to be really clever, uh, if you think about how often we revalue it, there's no set period about when we revalue. You know, we revalue it if it is relevant to the user and it is relevant if it is material. So therefore, we will only revalue the asset if there is a material increase. Okay, there we go. So all those rules that you have within IS16 come back to this foundation stone, the conceptual framework. Uh, inventory, again, how do we go through there and measure inventory? Uh, remember, inventory is the lower of cost versus NRV. And again, you've got the same historic cost. You've then got the same net realizable value. So that's looking there at an exit price when you, you sell it. So going through there again, thinking about it, it's fair value. And the inventory specific fair value is measured under IS2, not under IFRS 13, which we'll touch upon at a later date. Again, what you can go through and do as well, if you think about the lower elements, that just brings in again, just a, a tiny little bit of prudence. And again, remember, prudence has been reintroduced, hasn't it, there, into the framework as part of, the, of your faithful representation, okay? Uh, meaning there, that there is no bias, uh, and we have exercised prudence to make sure the information is neutral, okay? Uh, and then what you can also go through and do as well, Uh, you can also go through that and think about recognition and de-recognition. So remember, we look at your de-recognition if it is relevant. And gives us faithful representation. So we're able to faithfully represent it because we can measure it reliably. Uh, I shouldn't really use those words, uh, but it reduces the measurement uncertainty. And it's relevant because those items of PPE, of, of inventory, okay, in, in isolation, it might be immaterial, but combined. They are going to be material, aren't they? So we can recognise them within the financial statements. De-recognition. Uh, what we're thinking about there with regards to de-recognition is that when we sell it, we de-recognise because we lose control, don't we? Okay, we've got rid of the resource and therefore we no longer recognise it. It'll be a profit or loss on disposal of PPE. And the inventory will be measured as revenue. Okay. Excellent. Happy with that? Great. Uh, if you look at the answer at the back, it, it's written out uh, in a more exam style as opposed to a note style that you have there. Uh, next one, oh, example three measurement. This is getting in the world of a real type of FR question. One that you're seeing to skip. It's, it's, it's just so hard. Okay. It really is tough. Why? Because what you've got here is it starts talking about which of the following statements are false. So it's not looking at which are right, it's which are false. And here we are using historical cost accounting, okay, compared to your current value, okay. So here it says prices are subject to regular increases. So that is saying that there is 
inflation within this economy. So that's the case. Current value accounting will give you higher values, won't it? Okay. Uh, so if we're thinking there about current values having higher values, historic cost accounting gives you a lower cost, doesn't it? Okay. Or a lower value. So that's effectively thinking about your capital employed. So we're looking at your capital employed. What are the two statements there? Which one's true? Which one's false? Uh, so what you've got there is the second one says capital employed, which is calculated using historic cost, uh, is understated compared to current value capital employed. Well, we know that current value is your entry value, isn't it? If you were to purchase that specialised asset today, if prices are rising, then that will be higher. So therefore, your historic cost is understated. So that is correct, isn't it? Number four starts talking about saying that the same scenario, increasing prices, historic cost compared to current value accounting. Uh, historic cost is saying they are overstated. Well, that's wrong because they are lower. So they are understated. So one of the answers involves number four. Okay. What have we then got? The next bit, again, is just a little bit more challenging because if you look at it, it's starting to talk about your profits. So if we're thinking about my profits on the historical cost and if you're comparing it to current value, okay? If you have your historical cost accounting, then your depreciation is lower. And your profits are higher. OK, uh, so therefore, uh, if we look at numbers one and three, number three, I think, is right. Because it says historic costs, profits are overstated. Well, for higher. That's effectively the same as being overstated. So historic cost profits are overstated in comparison to current value profits. Because here, if you've got your current value and it's inflation, then depreciation is higher. And therefore, your profits are lower. OK, so therefore, the false one, the wrong one is one. No, historical cost profits are understated. No, they're not. Uh, they are overstated, aren't they? Because we have that lower depreciation. So one and four are the right answers because they are false with regards to the statement. So therefore, that gives you answer B. Ooh, isn't that a horrible note to finish off on? A really tough, challenging question like that one. Work it through. Make sure you understand it. Think it through a few times. It is a bit of a challenge. If you get stuck, throw out the questions on the Ask the Tutor forum. You're more likely to get an answer there than by posting the questions down below.